Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're answering another question from one of our members who wanted to know how to transition objects into a scene dynamically like this. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member over at cgshortcuts.com or on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So we'll start with a stripped down version of the example scene with just the coffee table, the cup and the rug. But I won't actually go through the unrolling carpet setup because we've covered that in another tutorial, which I'll link to down below. So let's delete that so it's not distracting us. Then, because we'll be applying dynamics to these objects, it's probably a good idea to make sure everything is in real world scale, which we can easily check over here by adding the figure object to our scene, which gives us a human sized reference, which is 180 centimeters tall. So if everything in our scene looks about the right size compared to our guy, our dynamic simulation should look nice and realistic. So I think I'm happy with that. So let's remove this guy and set this up. Basically, we want these objects to scale up from nothing and drop down into our scene and bounce a bit when they come into contact with the floor. So let's start by making our coffee table dynamic by hitting Shift C and adding a rigid body tag. And so our table can collide and interact with the floor. We need to give that a dynamics collider tag. And now if we rewind this, we can grab our table and move it up in the air a bit. And if we play this, the simulation kicks in and it falls straight to the ground. But falling like that does look a bit boring. So let's try that again. This time, let's have it start on a slight angle instead. And I think having it bounce a bit before settling into place looks a bit more interesting. So let's go with that. So that's the dynamic sorted. So now we need to have the scale up from nothing as it falls into the scene. And you could just head over to the object coordinates and keyframe the scale settings here. But I actually prefer to do the scaling with an effector instead. So let's add a plane effector as a child of our coffee table. And for this to actually affect our object, we need to go over to the deformer tab and set this to object mode instead. And let's now push the coffee table up further because by default under the parameter tab, this is affecting the object's position along the Y axis but we'll disable that and have it affect the scale instead, which we can make uniform to control this with a single value here. However, the access point of our table is currently at the bottom of our object, but it might look better if it scales up from the center instead. So if we make sure we've got the coffee table selected and not the plane effector, we can hit shift C again and grab our axis center tool. And with these default settings, we can hit execute and we've now shifted the access point to the center of the table. So now we can close this and go back to our effector. And we're now scaling from the center of our object instead. So let's animate the scale. On frame zero, let's set this to negative one, which basically scales it down to nothing. And we'll set a keyframe there. Then we'll go ahead to maybe frame four. So this is a nice quick transition. And we'll set this back to zero, which is no scaling and keyframe that. Then if I just disable the dynamics for a second, so we can see only the effect of our plane effector, which just quickly scales it in from nothing like so. We can now re-enable the dynamics and here's what we get. It's not bad, but there is something a bit weird going on. If we step through this frame by frame, it's actually scaling up, then down and up again. And I think that's just a bug with how the dynamics loads on the first frame. But I found if we just make sure there's no scaling on frame zero by moving this animation along to frame one, if we now play this, that seems to fix the problem and we get the effect we're after. So that's our table transitioning in. Let's now apply the same setup to our coffee cup. So I'll copy our rigid body dynamics tag from the table to the cup and we'll grab that and move it up in the air as well. But if we play this now, both objects will become dynamic straight away and collide with each other, which isn't quite what we want. We actually want to transition them one after the other. And we're going to have the dynamics on our cup switched off at first before activating it after our table has appeared by keyframing the enable setting here. So if I set a keyframe with the dynamics enabled, we can move that along to maybe frame 12. So it'll be activated then. And if we set another keyframe with this unchecked, meaning it'll be deactivated, we can move that key just before the activation keyframe. And now if we play this, 
our table falls into place, then the cup drops down straight after. But again, dropping it straight down is boring. So let's go back and we'll have this start on an angle as well. So just play around with the angle and height until you get it landing how you want. But now we need to scale this up as it falls down as well. So we'll copy the plane effector to our cup as well. But we'll need to move the keyframes along so the scaling happens as soon as the cup dynamics kick in. So I'll move that ahead to frame 12 as well. And we should now get our two objects transitioning into our scene one after the other. And that is pretty much the setup I used. You can also play around with the bounce and friction settings in your rigid body tags to change the way your objects collide with each other. Or if you hit Shift D to bring up the project settings, you can also increase the simulation sub steps to get a more accurate simulation, which might make things look a bit better. And if you have problems with your collisions, you can try increasing the collision passes and iterations. But adjusting the starting position of your objects will probably have the biggest effect on your collisions. Now we can easily disable the effectors and get rid of the scaling so we can see our objects again and rotate and position them however we want. Then if we re-enable the scaling, we now get a different looking simulation. So for my final scene, I applied the rigid body tag and plane effector to all the different objects and staggered the keyframes like so to have them all transitioning into the scene one after the next. And that is pretty much it for this effect. You can grab the render ready project file for this from our website at the link below. And if you found this video useful, feel free to leave a like or a comment down there as well. And if you need a bit of extra help with Cinema 4D, please do get in touch or become a CG Shortcuts member, which gives you access to all of our premium C4D training and resources so you can master Cinema 4D faster. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.